Why, hello there, everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayo gozaimasu. And today's video may be a bit short, but is more so covering a situation on my end, and that is regarding the two spot assassin bugs, Ghost Morph, or the Ghost Shrain. So before we continue, let us discuss about this strain of the two-spot assassin bugs. So for those who are not familiar with assassin bugs, the typical two-spot assassin bugs are usually yellow banded on their legs, but this is the ghost morph or the ghost strain, which is essentially a line bred thing to where these specimens here lack the yellow pigments or they lack the yellow melanin that makes their legs yellow. So it gives them a more dull or muted appearance of more of a white cream color, which gives off a ghostly color appearance, which is why it's called the ghost strain. But anyhow though, let us discuss about the problem at our hands. So the problem is a very simple one, and that is overpopulation. Yes, these guys are prolific egg layers. They lay eggs like crazy. And honestly, that is an understatement because these guys lay more eggs than chickens do. It is, like, I cannot keep up with how many there are. And you will notice that there's not really much, if not any nymphs at all in this enclosure or this entire colony. And that is because I have been trying to get rid of these guys as fast as possible. But no matter how much or how many I'm getting rid of, it seems like more eggs are just being laid. Now, I could get rid of the adults, but then again though, nobody wants to be held responsible if these guys become invasive. But let me tell you everyone, these assassin bugs are as tough as nails. They can withstand quite a bit of change in their enclosures. It is honestly surprising to me. So allow me to explain. I actually tried to lower their egg production rates and their hatch rates by number one, removing the humidity spots because these guys usually lay their eggs on where it's the most moist or the most humid spot in their enclosure. So I removed it and I hoped that it will actually reduce the offspring situation. But lo and behold, they were still hatching out just as normally. Then I decided to place them in a cooler spot because that way I thought it was going to help out with reducing the egg layings and whatnot, but they laid eggs like it was normal. So honestly, I'm surprised it, man, these guys are way more tougher than tarantulas are when it comes to temperature changes and humidity changes. But anyhow though, let us discuss about their diet. So currently these guys are being fed red runner roaches, dubia roaches, mealworms, and superworms. And I have to say, they're kind of uh, a mixed bag here. Some of them are actually really good eaters, others are more picky about what they choose to eat. It's pretty surprising because they have a lot of personality and you're going to see it here in this video how some of them are pretty much straight on just absolute beast of hunters and eaters and others are more so of a picky I want to eat this or I'm cautious of this type of eater. It's uh, it's honestly pretty interesting. And I think the most surprising part is that even though I have about 20 to 40 adults in this one enclosure, they tend to have a lot of splitting personalities to where I can pretty much tell which one is which at times. So uh, uh, that's saying something. Now, I did give a disclaimer back then that there is a chance of cannibalism if there's a lack of food. But in my experience so far, there has been no cannibalism at all. These guys are pretty much buddy-buddy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, man, I don't know how to describe these guys. These guys are like true bros in my experience so far. It's, it's actually very adorable. And I, I, I'll admit it's pretty cute, but man, do they breed like crazy. So a lot of you may be wondering, why did I get these? And the reason why I got these is because I'm trying to diversify my collection. I know that I specialize in tarantulas and a lot of you are here for that, but I've also been trying to actually expand my reach and my knowledge of exotic pets as well into other stuff. So I'm currently trying to expand more than just tarantulas. And it's not because I hate tarantulas, it's just because I feel like I've done pretty much everything with tarantulas to the point where I really want to start expanding my skill on other exotic pets. So there's a lot I really want to try out, so stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys can wish me the best on this journey on trying to embrace other exotic pets and get my experience in for other things as well, other than tarantulas. But I'm not quitting tarantulas, so don't, don't, don't look at it that way, nor am I stepping back from it. I'm just trying to expand my overall experience with other animals. So these two-spot assassin bugs, Ghost Shrain, is essentially my first step into other exotic pets. 
but if anyone has any recommendations on any sort of exotic pets that they think I can master or get into, please let me know down below because I am open to other suggestions about other exotic pets as well. And now let us continue on to another somewhat of a smaller situation, but this one isn't as bad. As you can see, my Nubia colonies. I have a lot of them. Too many of them. <laughs> I've been giving these away for free as well to some people, but it seems like I can't get rid of enough of these because man, they are just producing like crazy. I've been trying to feed away my females to stop uh, all these babies being made, but they just keep coming. This is something I'm trying to figure out on how to deal with because I do have a couple of colonies of dubias so I am trying to get something that can actually devour all of these dubia roaches and I do have something in mind so I have to go get her back if I can but uh let us see if I can because this individual took one of my pets that I gave away because I thought there was going to be a better keeper than I was but it turns out I had to go back and go get him so that animal is going to help deal with the situation here. But as of now, this overpopulation of dubia roaches is not a big one, but it can become a situation if it's not kept in check. So a lot of people need to understand about tarantulas. Tarantulas have some of the slowest metabolisms out there when it comes to exotic pets. They have extremely, extremely slow metabolisms. So all of my adult females and all my larger specimens, they're fed only once a month. So if you do the math, yeah, that's not a lot. And currently in my collection, there's about 70 to 100 spiders. And if you think that's a lot of spiders, that is a small number in comparison to how fast dubias can reproduce. Like, it's crazy. So I am giving some of these away to keep these in control as of now, until I can get one of my old pets back. But until then, we're kind of on the waiting list. So this video is not really a tarantula video, it's more so of a situation on my end video, but I hope you guys find this informative because I am trying to keep you guys updated on things that are happening in my collection, and this is something I had to talk about because it's been a long while. So, I guess I'll wrap it up around here, so without further ado, as the typical, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and also stay updated to whenever I upload here on the channel. I upload every single Tuesday and Friday. And also, support me on my social medias, such as my IG and Patreon. Links to everything is down below. And with that, stay lax, and laxo out. From the Kumo Sensei.